I basically was led towards free soloing El Cap through this 20 year process of, of being a rock climber, pushing myself, getting into free soloing, and, and sort of free soloing all the other big walls in Yosemite until I was left with, with El Capitan. Throughout the weeks and months of preparation leading up to the free solo, I had to make more of an effort to, to rid myself of distraction. And so part of that was erasing all the social media apps off my phone. Uh, part of it, I just stopped responding to email for so long that I stopped getting emails, which was actually a pretty amazing process. I knew that I would only do the climb without a rope once, and visualization allowed me to practice something over and over that I couldn't actually physically practice because I was only going to do it the one time. Part of it meant remembering the moves, like thinking through the, the literal left hand goes here, right hand goes there. But more importantly, visualization helped me prepare for the emotional component of that, what it will feel like to grab the hold, what it will feel like under my fingers, what the air will feel like around me when I don't have a rope, what it will feel like to look down at my foothold to place it on a foot just the right way. And, and when I look down, seeing that there's no rope and no partner and, and it's a 2,000 foot drop to the ground. On the actual free solo, it's easy to, to not get distracted just because the actual task at hand is so engaging that I, that I was forced to focus 100%. And I think honestly, that's part of the real pleasure of free soloing is, is the focus that's, that's required of me and, and how good that feels to be fully present in what I'm doing. Having a camera on the wall documenting th this climb actually felt relatively normal for me as a, as a professional climber. I mean, that's something that uh, I'm, I'm used to working with cameras on a, on a wall. But having a camera watch me and my girlfriend is, is a little more, uh, you know, it's a little more challenging. Before my free solo of El Cap, I definitely felt my nerves a little bit. I mean, it's a really big wall and you look up at it and, and you don't have a rope and you're like, oh, that's pretty big. That's, you know, it's certainly intimidating. But at the same time, I was also very excited. I had trained for years for this, for this day and I was, it was finally the big day. You know, it was the moment I've been waiting for in a way. You know, it's hard to know how much that's nervousness, how much is excitement, how much is just, you know, being amped up for this big physical challenge. But I was certainly feeling something. <laughs> No matter what you're afraid of, the best way to deal with your fear is to sort of systematically work through it. So systematically broaden your comfort zone until whatever it is that you're afraid of will eventually fall within your sphere of comfort. And I think that the key to broadening your comfort zone is to never go too far outside your comfort zone because basically if you do something too scary, it's sort of traumatic and it actually sort of sets you back a ways. But if you keep gradually increasing your level of comfort through you know, systematically taking on bigger challenges and bigger risks or, or whatever it is that you're afraid of, I think that as long as you gradually push yourself over time, you can eventually get used to almost anything. El Cap represented the end of this very long path for me. It's something that I worked on for, for many years and dreamed about for many years and there just really isn't anything quite like that. Um, but hopefully, you know, with a few months to myself just climbing, I'll start to get inspired by something again. We'll see.